Dr. Kemi here, the most intelligent Nigerian public figure. It's September 1st, 2024. I'm going to give you some immigration stories today and education. We're going to put that under Kemi Talks Travel. Now, listen up. A disclaimer. I'm not an immigration lawyer and I'm definitely not an immigration consultant. I'm a retired journalist and I'm Nigerian American. I'm giving you information based on the fact that I've lived there for a long time and I know the system. Okay? If you don't like the truth, don't follow my Kemi Talks Travel um, posts because I'm not actually promoting anything. I'm educating you guys. So don't let me see in the comments. Can you help me? Can you put me through? Can you? Don't ask me any questions. You got to hire an immigration lawyer for that or a consultant. Okay? I'm just giving you information. You have expensive phones. A lot of these questions you're asking are on the websites of United States Citizen and Immigration, State Department. Everything's in your expensive phone. Learn how to use your phone, okay? So, Kemi Talks Travel. The first thing I want to tell you is the background of USCIS. You hear people talk about USCIS, USCIS. Even me, I'm sitting now and I'm like, what? US what? CIS, United States Citizen and Immigration Services, used to be a different name. It used to be called INS, okay? Immigration and Naturalization Service, okay? And it was headquarters in Vermont. Now they have different headquarters, different places. They're processing visas, national visa centers in different cities and all. And when it was INS, it was under the United States Department of Justice, okay? The Justice Department. It was totally different. Now... Things change after 9-11. Everything changed after 9-11. Okay, September 11, terrorism attack. America wants to know who's actually entering their country now. So they created the state homeland security thing. Okay, Department of Homeland Security. Um, the State Department, everything now, you know, they created different parastatals, basically. You know what a parastatal is, Ministry of this, Ministry of that. So... They now put USCIS, they named it United States Citizen and Immigration Services, USCIS, and they put it under Department of Homeland Security. So now, when I applied for my green card in 1997 or so, it was I got an NIW, uh, Alien of Exceptional Ability, the National Interest Waiver one, and it was done by my, you know, now Senator Benjamin Cardin, who was... Um, Congressman then, Congressman Cardin, um, Senator Barbara Mikulski, um, Congressman Elijah Cummins, the late Congressman Elijah Cummins, oh, his death really saddened me, and um, Congressman Kwasi Mfumi, who is still there. I don't know whether Kwasi is now a senator. I have to check still. But in any case, those four lawmakers were my sponsors. They sponsored me because of the work I was doing in schools. I was doing a lot of work with drug abuse prevention in schools. So I was automatically eligible for that NIW, you know, waiver. A lot of people that have excellent talents, helping the U.S. government, helping the U.S. society at large, you're actually eligible for this kind of visas. So it's important to know what kind of visas do you want to use to get to America, okay? It doesn't come easy, and it doesn't come with fake documents. I can tell you that. I keep telling you guys, stop taking fake documents to the U.S. Embassy in Lagos. Okay, it's very high over there. The Interpol is in there. They're working in there, and they'll hand you over to them. You're not just going home. You're going with the Interpol, and you can do like 10 years in prison. Number one, you'll get a 10-year visa ban. So please, have authentic, real documents, and don't take fake documents, Okay. In the next few videos in Kemi Talks Travel, I'm going to talk about the different kind of visas and what you need to know about them. You can ask me questions about those visas, but don't ask me to help you or put you through to an agent. I don't know any agents in Nigeria. I don't trust any agents anywhere. There's a lot of scams, and USCIS themselves always wants people, so be careful who you're giving your money to. Okay, At one point there, people couldn't even apply to go visit ordinary America. Okay, or should I say it this way? They couldn't apply for an ordinary visa to visit America because agents had bought the visas appointment. Can you imagine? They were buying appointments and then selling it to you there so that you can have an early interview or something. This is slowing everybody down, you know? So let's start. It's Kemi Talks Travel. All right?